You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome back to Ask the Master Auto Technician. My name is James Morris. My wife, Anna Marie Morris, is uh, manning the phone. <laughs> she mans the phone. She's not on television, but there's only two of us. We're a small mom and pop business here, but we've been on the radio and television since 1998, bringing you information and news, what's happening in your surrounding counties, and, you know, just something that might help you out. We have people that call all the time, like the gentleman who called a few minutes ago about his older model truck. You know, it's a 92. You say, well, who drives a 90? There's a bunch of people driving 90 model vehicles out there. They run great. You know, they have little problems with them, but they can be fixed, and they're pretty darn dependable, and they're not as complicated as the newer, say, 96 and, and newer models, because they got a lot more complicated. Starting in 96, they went to, from OBD1 to OBD2 in 96, and now when 2008 rolled around, it was OBD2 on uh, steroids, I call it, because it was uh, CAN communication, computerized at worst networking, where you had several, se I'm talking lots and lots of computers are all tied in together, and they're all talking each other and they're all tattling on each other. You have one over there that's not working quite right and, and you won't even know anything about it but another computer will say hey he's not talking to us right and uh, we got to and they'll put a code in there saying hey this computer over here is not working right and that's how to me it it may be more complicated, but it's a lot easier to diagnose a problem and get to the root of the problem and to solve it. Instead of one computer doing everything, they have multiple computers doing everything. It used to be the one computer controlled the engine and it controlled the transmission and it controlled all the little things that went with it. And so they decided, you know, that's great, but we were kind of overloading things. So why don't we have a separate computer for the transmission, have a separate computer for the engine, separate computer for the uh, in instrument cluster, a separate computer for the uh, climate control, a separate computer for this, separate. I mean, it is not uncommon on some vehicles to have over a hundred different processors or computers all linked together. I think the 2011, uh, I was in class, we were talking about uh, Cadillac CTS has 111 computers on it. That's a lot of computers. So just to give you an idea, that's what has to be done. You know, you have to be able to have a shop that knows how they all talk to each other. And a lot of times these different computers have to be reprogrammed. And I'm not exact. we have cars that come in and they'll come in for a uh, check engine light. Uh, EGR, check engine light, on a, on a Ford product. And uh, we asked him, I said, wow, how long has the problem been on? He said, man, I've been fighting this problem for over a year now. I said, well, what have you done to correct it? Well, we've changed the EGR. We've cleaned the passageways out. We've changed the DPFE valve. I mean, that, you know, these are all the different parts they've done. And I said, did you have a shop do it or did you do it yourself just because you thought that might have been the problem? And he said, well, I got on the internet and they said this could be the problem, that could be the problem. I said, yes, they can be, but there's test procedures for these problems here. If, they're pro if the part are, are fine if they're if they're electrically where they're supposed to be if they're within the parameters of you know minimum and maximum and they seem to be working like they're supposed to you might want to start looking for a reprogramming that's the thing that I see a lot of shops including myself before I got the equipment years ago I would overlook we'd sit there and go well everything seems to be right well it must be this problem here maybe it's intermittently defective but what we found out is like I talked about in the first segment it's the programming that's in the vehicle sometimes Sometimes they get corrupted, uh, just like people. They, do, they, <laughs> they get corrupted to the point where they can't function like they're supposed to and they give the false information in. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. So if you're getting fault, faulty information in, it's going to put faulty information out. Well, sometimes you get great information in, but it can't exactly, due to the programming in it, it can't decipher what it means. Something happened. It gets a mental block. So that's one of the reasons I say it's so very, very important that you have a shop that understands how this system works. But I got Andrew calling on a 1998 Ford Taurus with a three liter engine in it. Uh, those cars right there are great cars, except when they run hot, Andrew. If they run hot, you can just about do a lot of damage on it. What's your question about it? Never sir? ran hot. Good, wonderful. What is your question about your 98 Taurus, sir? Well, uh, so it, it clicks when you turn the ignition. But sometimes it'll start. Okay. I've been told it's a solenoid. Let me ask you a question. You turn the key and you turn it all the way, and all of a sudden, all you hear is one solid click, like click. That's all you hear, that's right? That's it. Okay, and you turn it back and you turn it again, you may hear a click again. And then, Every time you turn and, it, it'll Okay, click. and then occasionally you'll turn it and it'll start, correct? Right. Okay, this is, the, okay, there's two things that you're describing. One is a possible voltage drop due to bad battery terminals or a bad battery connection. That's I've had a, the battery check. I've cleaned all the terminals. Good. 
new battery. Good. All right. That's the battery and the alternator. Good. I don't. That's where I don't. Well, good. So long as you've got a good battery connections, and we know <clears throat> we know the car battery is hot because occasionally it will start when you turn it click 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 and finally it goes what you're going to find it's a bad starter here's what I'm going to, to verify it's a bad starter it's going to require two people it's going to require someone to turn the key to go click and then someone else to crawl underneath the car and gently I don't mean hard take with a small hammer tap the starter at the same time that's being t held in the in the start position if you tap the starter and it starts replace the starter right sometimes you do that you just tap the solenoid switch yes but or, right but this solenoid is it not on the start right off. is the solenoid not built on the starter on well, this board says the first five inches of that smaller wire i don't know what they're called i guess mm -hmm. for the switch uh, corrodes and replace it up to five inches. Well, here's what, one of the things, I, biggest thing I find on, on these Fords, the starter and the solenoid are built on together. And yes, they, they are. They, and it, but they're, they're actually put on, they used to put them on with screws. Uh -huh. and now they have it up with screw and they put a lot tight on there that you can't move. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Tricky, tricky parts yeah. manufacturer. Now, here's, here's the other question. Now, like you're talking about, it could be a voltage drop. Do you have a digital volt ohm meter? No. Okay, because that's what you have to have to determine if you got a voltage drop problem. You have to have a DVOM, and it's and it's really not hard to do. But a lot of people, all you got to do is take one end of the digital volt ohm meter and put it on the positive cable with the battery, and you take the other lead and you go down to that little bitty wire that you know that you the starter right. wire, and you put it on there, and then you turn your key and you look at the digital volt ohm meter. If it reads anything more than a half a volt, if say it reads like 1.5 volts, two two volts, that's how much voltage drop you have. If you've got anything more than a half a volt, you've got a problem between the battery, or, excuse me, between the battery, the ignition switch, and the starter, which I kind of doubt, but it does happen, and I have seen that happen, where you have as much as two to three volts of drop, and the replacement, according to Ford, is to replace the ignition switch, but what I do is I just put a relay in it and make a kicker out of it. I could just call it a kicker, especially an older model car, where when you turn the key, it just it, uh, actuates the relay, which sends 12 volts from the battery directly to the starter, taking the ignition switch, so to speak, out of the circuit. And so you get a full right. 12 volts going down there. I'm not trying to sound complicated, but that's what we do in older model cars. Right. that have well, this, a, this car is you know, it's 18, almost yeah. 18 years yeah. old, yeah. Yeah. but it only has 84,000 miles. It's nothing. It really miles. is. But if, and I only put a thousand miles a year on it, if that. If that. So that's why I'm saying it's going to require two people. The easiest thing I can get you to do is, like I said, have someone hold it in the start position where it goes click, and then you get underneath there and just gently tap the starter. If the starter starts up, it's not a voltage drop. It's a bad well, I starter. I can't get under there. You're going to have to have two. You need two people. You need a skinny I'm person. Decrepted. I'm too decrepit to do that. <laughs> Hey, it's six o'clock in the morning. I can't get it. I can't even get underneath a coffee cup at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm trying my darnest to get underneath a coffee cup and get woke up. But I hope this show helps you out, Andrew. And if you have yeah, any sure problems, I've been watching you quite a while. Well, I love good. it when you talk about cars, but not so much I, on politics. Yeah, I, understand. I hear that all the time. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You know, but the funny thing is, though, politics determines the kind of car you drive. Believe it or not. Oh, I know that. Oh, it does. I know. I know all about their yeah. government. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible tells you uh, that in the last days, the kings of the earth, you know, like the presidents, prime ministers, mm -hmm. whatever, will act as children, raising well, their hands, not knowing what to do. Well, you know, you got a good point there. There's a there's a lot of people out there that are supposed to be adults that act like children. They really are. They don't they don't think correctly. I don't think. I don't. I don't even think they think. I just think it's they react. really hard to find a smart person. I've got a doctor that's really smart. Well, yeah, you know, that's something that's good. You should be on a first name basis with your doctor, your lawyer, your minister, and your auto technician. All right, well, thanks. My for... minister is my nephew, so I'm on first <laughs> you're on a first basis. name basis with all of them. I've known him a while. <laughs> well, you don't hesitate. Okay, well, thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Don't hesitate to give us a call again if we can help you out, Andrew. I appreciate all right, that. Thanks, all right. Uh, hey, this is James Morris. If you've got a car question, give us a call 850-7630555. This is 
the fastest 30 minutes in Bay County. Well, at least it is for me because I talk all this 30 minutes and it goes real, real fast. We only got about three minutes left of this show before we have to go to, well, until we're gone until tomorrow morning. But we're doing this every morning to help people, you know, get because it's, we have found out it's too difficult for everybody Cars don't just break on Saturday mornings or Friday nights. They well, break. then that's the thing, you know. Right. And plus, this gives us an opportunity to get our Saturdays back. Yeah, you know, it's so true. We know. I, I, when was the last time you got up and went and played golf on Saturday morning? Uh, oh, that's right. It was last that's, Saturday. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Well, that, but it was so nice for the first, you know, normally every Saturday morning I have to get up early, do the radio show, and it's a two-hour radio show, you know, and I enjoy it. I've been doing it since 1998. But TV's just as much fun. Well, TV's more fun uh, because you get to play to the camera. You actually get to, you know, before you just listen to, you know, people get to hear your voice, but if they hear your voice and they see your face and uh, they can kind of, they see you, on the, it's kind of nice to be a celebrity, maybe in my own mind, but... Every, well, yeah, you have people, when you go downtown, they oh, go, oh, yeah. there he is. It, well, you know, well, I worked the airport the other day uh, after the golf course. You worked course. the airport? In what, what way? Did well, you I work worked the airport, airport at the Military Welcome okay. Center. Oh, I, oh, you weren't doing something. No, I was working at the airport, the Military Welcome Center, uh, part of my ro part of my rotary duties that's not ordered by a judge for community service, but it's one of the things that Lynn Haven Rotary does. And speaking of Lynn Haven Rotary, uh, don't forget the Thanksgiving dinner, November 26th. We're selling tickets at James Auto Center. It's $10 here at James Auto Center. If you go po folks on the 26th of November, uh, for Thanksgiving is $12 and we're selling it and it's to help the Lynn Haven Rotary to do things in our community and the money stays all in Lynn Haven and Panama City area. It doesn't go anywhere else. But back to what I was saying on the radio show, television show, it's a lot of fun to be able to do this, to come to people and help people out. And that's what we've been doing for a long, long time. And we want to help have you give us a call at 850-763-0555 because you are what makes the show good. I mean, I can come up with answers and if I don't know the answers, I'll tell you, I don't know the answers. And if I don't know the answers, maybe I can direct you to someone who does. But we have a lot of sponsors that actually participate in the show. We have Scott Hobbs from Hobbs Plumbing. He'll be calling tomorrow morning. We have Karen Schoen. She's not a sponsor, but she'll be calling. She was supposed to call today, but I don't think we woke, woke her up in time. And uh, we've got uh, Mr. Ru I already said Mr. Reuter. We've got uh, uh, Baytown Tires, handsome Henson Han handsome Hanson Hindenburg from Baytown Tires. He's been calling for years on here. We've got uh, Bob from uh, Interstate Batteries. And of course, we've got Joe Kane from That Boot Store and the Springfield Plaza. All these sponsors have been sponsors of Aston Master Auto Technicians for years. And let's don't forget years. Napa. Well, <laughs> Napa. How can you forget Napa? Napa was from the, along with Joe Kane. From the very beginning. Very, very beginning. If it wasn't for Napa, we would not have this show, I don't think, because they trusted me. They tr trusted the faith that I'd be able to do what I told them I was going to be able to do. Just like my customers, when I tell them, we're going to fix your car, we're going to fix it right, we're going to guarantee we fix it right, and that's what and that's what they expect, and that's what Na our sponsors expect. They expect me to do what I tell them to do, to promote their businesses, and we expect you to go in there and spend money with them because that's what pays for this show. If you've got a car question, You've got a comment. You want to be a part of the show Monday through Friday from 6 to 6.30 on WPGX Fox 28. Give us a call. We're here to help you get answers that you may need to get you through the holidays, to get you through, well, till next, just to get you through. Because just being alive is a day-to-day -day battle out there. And every time you have a problem with your car, it's just one more problem that you can't get an answer to real quick. And you want to because if you don't have a car, you don't have your independence. You don't have your freedom. You don't have your mobility. Because, you know, you got to have a car if you want to get around in this part of the country. Hey, this is James Morris. Give us a call 850-763-0555. And uh, if we don't talk to you today, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning from 6 to 6.30 on WPGX Fox 28. Bye-bye now. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah.